Amen. There are those who are watching online. I know there, in fact, I just realized that <laughs> that cross point our broadcast, there's a lot of people that have been watching this online. So I want to say a hello to our online viewers. In fact, I found out that there's uh, people from my work <laughs> that, <laughs> that follows me. <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> so I, wanna, I told them I would say hi to them. <laughs> I want to say hi to Melnick and Tanani. <laughs> I hope that was recorded. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So this morning, it is a wonderful morning. It is a beautiful morning. We have a, a, a change of weather, a beautiful uh, sunshine that is happening there. And we are grateful to God for that. Amen. Amen. For this month of June, there are some things that God has laid on my heart and that I would like to share them with you. The Lord has been speaking to me about wisdom. Amen. You know, just because I stand here doesn't make me the most wisest person. Believe me, sometimes you, you make decisions and, and choices in life that later on you stand back and realize that if you had known, you would have done things a little different. Yes. Can I get a witness? Yes. Uh -huh. You, you would have done things a little different. And so this morning, you know, one of the crucial aspects of the gifting of God is, is, is wisdom, the wisdom of God. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Whenever we are in need or we find ourselves in a tight corner, you find yourself, you know, in a position where you never pray for. You find yourself in a position where it is not, it's not something that you even dream for. But there are times we find ourselves in a very tight corner. And some of us, you go to your friends asking for wisdom. Some of you will even pay for wisdom, which is okay. But I want to tell you that in this Bible contains the wisdom of God. In this is the mind of God. It's the wisdom of God. There are times that you don't need to talk too much. You don't need to be going from here to here. What you need to do is begin to open your Bible. Begin to go down on your knees. Because we have a God who all wisdom belongs to. We have a God that has a solution to every existing issues of life. Yes. Even things that does not exist, our God has a, a wisdom for it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And this morning, it is my prayer that by the end of this service, you would desire wisdom. Amen. And not only just any wisdom, but the wisdom of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It is crucial in this end time that the child of God must be a child of wisdom. You function in wisdom. You operate in wisdom. You move in wisdom. Or else the enemy will, will, will destroy your life. The enemy will mislead you. Hallelujah. So this morning, wisdom is crucial. Wisdom is essential. It's important. You have no other way but to seek the wisdom of God. Hallelujah. And that sometimes some of the challenges, some of the things that we find ourselves in in our lives is because we didn't seek the, the wisdom of God. Right. We didn't seek the counsel of God. Starting from myself, we are all guilty. Hello. We are all guilty. That because we did not seek the wisdom of God in that very thing that you are desiring. You seek your feelings. You seek your own mind or what makes sense to you. But then the wisdom of God is available to you. And if you do, the Lord will honor you. Amen. 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 
I want to read from Psalm 90, the verse number 12. And it says, So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Why is the psalmist saying that? Number one, the Lord is teaching us to number our days. It's because our days are very few. Your days on earth are few. Our pastor was just sharing with us, he went to Phoenix to bury somebody. Do you know that you are not here for forever? Yes. You are not, your days are numbered. That's what the Bible is saying. You need to number your days. You need to take good account of your days. And because of that, it will help you to spend and use your time wisely. Amen. Because your days are numbered. You cannot just misuse your time and your days. Take note of your days. And apply wisdom unto it. It will help you to cherish every minute. Some of us, we spend too much time fighting. Teach us to number our days. When your days are numbered, you cherish every moment of it. Yes. Why? Because the very person that you are sitting beside, there is no guarantee that you will see that person the next day. What makes you think that you, the person that you are sitting so comfortable beside, you will see the person the next day? You won't. It is only God that knows. Yes. And because of that, you need to cherish every minute. Yes. Loosen up. Yes. Tell somebody, loosen up. Yes. Loosen up. Yes. The days on earth are very few. Honor right. one another. Right. Cherish the moments that God has given to you. Or else you find out that, that most of your days are used in grumbling and fighting. You will have no memories. Why? Because most of your time were used in nagging and fighting and complaining. No. Teach us to number our days. That we may apply wisdom. We may bless the Lord. We may honor the Lord. So every minute count. Every moment we bless God. Hallelujah. What is wisdom? Wisdom is more than knowledge. Wisdom is more than knowledge. If wisdom was knowledge, then the most wisest people would be the most uh, would be the educated. With those who have acquired higher level of degrees, they will be the wise ones. But I got a good news for you. That ends so. That's right. That's right. <laughs> because you can meet somebody who is higher learning. Yet the moment they start talking, you realize that they have zero knowledge, uh, wisdom. They are not wise. Knowledge is not wisdom. That's good. That's good. You can acquire a lot of knowledge. It's good. But wisdom is there. May I remind you there are two sources of wisdom. There's the wisdom of God and there is the wisdom of this world. And the children of God in this modern era we have allowed the wisdom of this world to persuade us. We have allowed the wisdom that the world uses and that the world lives by to manipulate us. Sometimes your whole life is based on the wisdom of this world. That's right. It is not the wisdom of God. It is not upon the plan and the purpose of God for your life. Wisdom. And so, if wisdom is not knowledge, then what is wisdom? 
This morning, I want to tell you that wisdom is knowledge correctly applied. And I say correctly because you can apply knowledge in a very wrong way. Yes, what you're doing may be right, but the application of it is completely wrong. Yes, you may have, you may have every reason to do what you're doing, but you don't have the wisdom in the application of it. But when a wisdom is based on God, God will give you the application. Hallelujah. And so there is the wisdom of this world. I want us to read 1 Corinthians a little bit and then we will go down and see a few things. 1 Corinthians 1, 19 to 25. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and I will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. And I like 20. God is actually challenging the so-called wise. Yes, yes. You know, God is actually calling them out. What does it say? He said, where is the wise? Where is the scribe, which is the teacher? Where is the disputer of this world? Have not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Verse 22, for the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a standing block, and unto the Greeks foolishness, but unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God, and the wisdom of of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. In the scripture we have just read, the Bible is just clearly saying that God will destroy the wisdom of this world. So if your whole life is based on the wisdom of this world, God is saying that God, he will destroy it. Mm, that's good. The wisdom of this world, in fact, will destroy you. The wisdom of this world will bring you to shame. The wisdom of this world will take you high and bring you down fast. The wisdom of this world is disgrace. Hallelujah. God has placed destruction upon the wisdom of this world. I want to tell you, all the libraries, all the universities, all the governments, all the foundations of wisdom will be destroyed one day. Yes. I remember when there was no internet and, you know, if, <laughs> if you're doing a project in school, you have to spend so much time in the library yes. because that's where all, all the wisdom and the knowledge were at. Now you can just sit there and Google. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> you... You, they, they, you go through a whole line of books and, 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 and they have different numbers and stuff like that and you'll be searching uh, or this and that but now life has been much, much easier. No but <laughs> the Bible is saying the time has come where God will destroy the knowledge of this world. The, the universities and the wisdoms that, you know, it has been acquired, where it's boasted, you know, I went to Harvard. Yeah. I'm not saying I went to Harvard. <laughs> <laughs> but do you understand? People even boast about which university they've been to yes. because of the level of credentials and, 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 and reputation, reputation that they have. Yes. Because of this, 
People boast about that, which there's nothing wrong with it. But what I'm saying is that don't boast of the wisdom of this world. There is a greater wisdom, and that is the wisdom of God. And the scripture is also telling us this morning that God has made foolish the wisdom of this world. He had made foolish the wisdom of this world. The part that I want us to focus a little bit is the, the verse 22. It says, for the Jews require a sign and, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. You see, the Greeks or the people of Israel by nature or by means of relationship with God, they have always, uh, you know, known God through manifestation. That's all. They don't see, they don't believe. Somebody told me, seeing is believing. That's not true. No, that's right. <laughs> it says seeing, like the Thomas kind of people. Seeing, I have to see it before I can believe. There are times that you have to walk in the unknown. Believe beyond sight. To bring the hidden to manifestation. Amen. Hallelujah. So the people of the Israelites were sightseeing people. And they were saying that God must give them a sign. Because even when God, Moses met the God on the mountain, he said, you know, these people, if, if they ask me questions, what should I do? God said, don't worry, I'll give you a sign. I'll give you a sign. I'll give, I'll give, and that's why in, 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 in the life of Moses, and, and he, God manifests himself through powerful signs. You, have you noticed when you read Exodus, God used signs yeah. to prove. Because signs, if this is from God, I need a proof. Well, God doesn't always give proof. Sometimes you have to walk by faith. Because if you are waiting for a sign, it will take a very long time. In fact, sometimes the enemy will discourage you even before the sign comes. Give me proof if you are God. The proof is the word of God. Hallelujah. That is the proof. But the people of Israel, remember, the gospel was being preached to them. And it was so hard for them to receive. Because the, the mindset of a Messiah was not this guy over here. Yeah. This guy has no, there's nothing about Jesus that, you know, put him, put him into the Messiahship. They were looking for a king, somebody in a robe and dressed properly. Hallelujah. But they were looking for a sign. God is a God of his word. It's a God of his word. There are times, and I have prayed that prayer. He said, you know, Lord, if this is you, let this happen. You know, the problem with those kind of prayers is that the enemy can manipulate his way through that. There are days that you just have to believe God on his word. And by faith, just take a step. By faith, believe that the God who is with you the Bible said the steps of the righteous are ordered by God. Yes. And so if God is the God of my life, wherever step that I'm taking, Amen. and if it is not from him, God will divert it. Yes. Amen. Amen. What I'm saying is that it is not all the time that God will give you proof. That's right. It is not all the time that God will give you sign. You Jews are looking for a sign. In fact, when Jesus was on earth, the Bible said he was walking, the people asked him for a sign. He said, listen, I will not give you any sign except the sign of Jonah, that the son of man will be buried and on the third day he will resurrect. That is the only sign I will give you. There are days that you need to take God by his word. What is God saying about me? What is the word of God saying? There is detail 
word of God that is spoken into our lives. Those are there. But there are, there, are, there, are, there are times in our life where you are so much bombarded and so much, uh, you don't know if you're left from right. Child of God, just take his word. Yes. Believe the word of God that has been spoken. Amen. And as you do that, you realize your ways begin to get clearer and clearer and clearer. God sometimes just wants to be God. Which means that, he, like he said to Abraham, he said, Abraham, get up and go to the land I will show you. Why don't you just show me the land? <laughs> show me the land so I know this is where I'm going. He said, no, no, you get up and go. Hi. <laughs> the whole point is that God wants to be God. Yes. And that you keep trusting. Because you have no clue where you are going. <laughs> you are, and then you say, L right. And then you just keep going. Left. Keep going. Keep, it, you are developing and building trust on God. Yes. Trust in God. Yes. Not that you have your whole life figured out. There are days you have no clue. <laughs> eh? you, are, you are the leader and you have no clue. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> <laughs> and it is okay because God will order your steps God will order your steps because your faith is not in you have you you know there, there comes to a point in your life and all of a sudden you have a strong edge that God wants you to do something it wasn't something you prepare or plan for spontaneously all of a sudden you had an edge Go ahead and do it. Amen. You just respond as God leads you. Amen. God is a spontaneous God. Yes. There are days he will give you a blueprint of what is about to happen. There are days that you, you have no idea. You just have to believe. Yes. And just have to have faith and patience. Yes. Because if you don't, you rush ahead of God. Yes. And you will be make a big mess. Hallelujah. Am I speaking to somebody? Yeah. <laughs> and so the people of God, of, of, of the Jewish people, were looking for signs. They were looking for signs. Hmm, Lord, why don't you just give me a sign? I want to know. All I want to know, is this in you? Is this, like Apostle would say, this Kota Kinte? Is this, <laughs> is this guy real? And all of a sudden, nothing. Yeah. <laughs> nothing. You know, <laughs> have you ever heard God laugh? God laughs. Yes. It's in the Bible. It looks as everything is so silent around you. You are not even hearing a whisper. <laughs> everything is just silent. In that moment, just keep on his word. Keep on his word. Yeah. And one of the things that I will say about this is that never stop moving. Amen. You see, whatever God has told you to do, just keep doing it until he speaks and says something else. Yes, right? Yes. There are some who are just like this. You see, God is God of move. Then you are forcing him to speak. So as you take a step, then God is saying, okay, all right. You, you are active. Your spirit, your spiritual senses are active. And then God begins to speak. God begins, all of a sudden, you begin to have dreams. All of a sudden, you begin to sense some things. The reason is now you are beginning to take God on his word. Yes. You are believing in God. You, 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 and that moment, you are, you, are, you are now putting God in a spot of activeness. God becomes active in your life. God begin to speak. You begin to hear God in a way that you've never had before. Why? Because you're believing God and his word. Amen. 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 God will not always give you a sign. Because if you wait for the sign, you'll miss the promise. And that's what the people of Israel, they did. They were waiting for the Messiah to come in robe and kinship and in authority and to subdue the, 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 the Roman people, right? But that's not how God came. God used a different avenue to manifest himself. 
Hallelujah. Amen. The wisdom of God. The wisdom of God, the ways of God are different. Are way different than what you are used to. What you and I are accustomed to. Now, I want us to look at the earthly wisdom on this world that we live in. Because uh, one of the dangerous part of our, the wisdom of this world is that it has had or found root in our homes. The wisdom of this world has found roots as gradually some have been creeping into our lives. Yeah. Some have been creeping into even the church. Yeah. That's right. yeah. Well, you know, it's not that dangerous when the, the devil speaks a lie. But you know the plan of the devil is that when he speaks lie, the world will pick it up and begin to propagate it, speak it, magnify it. Yes. But as the, it's, it is a lie spoken by the devil, and the world has picked it up and begin to make loud noise of it. But now all of a sudden, the church is now speaking the same lie that the world is speaking. That is the danger. Yes. It, is, it is up to us as the church, the body of God, to correct lies. Especially that which is not in line with the word of God. Yes. But the, 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 the sad thing is that as the world speaketh, so the church accepts it and begins to speak it. No, it is not so. We are the vessels of God. We are, we are the mouthpiece of God. We speak what God speaks. Amen. Whether you like it or you agree. This is the word of God. Yes. Not what the world is saying. Yes. And so most of, our most of the time, we our, li our lives are aligned with the lies of this world. Mm -hmm. And it's not the wisdom from God. Hallelujah. Amen. James chapter 3, verse 14 and 16. But if ye have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descended not from above, but it is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. I want to tell you, that in our world today, our politics are full of the wisdom of this world. Yes. 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 Businesses. And sometimes it's not even, you know, the people of the world. Even in the church. The same structure and idea and the same mindset in which the world is using to do business. The people of, the, of, the, of God are using that same uh, style. And I'm telling you this morning, it is not the wisdom of God. Yes. And that wisdom will lead you to destruction. Will lead you to frustration. Our entertainments and everything that we see around us are full and filled with the wisdom of this world. And sometimes it is so sad. So I remember one time somebody was playing music and I said, what kind of music is this? They said, oh, you know, I like the beat. I said, he said this Christian gospel thing is he, he, not a... Uh, <laughs> it doesn't have the two... <laughs> You know, it looks like everything from the world is more interesting than the things of God. So I said, <laughs> I said, so you mean you can't find gospel music that you can dance to? So every dancing music, it has to be from the world. Every good thing has to be from the world. What I'm saying is that the the, the, the devil is using the wisdom of the world to manipulate his way into our lives. 
entertainment. If you're a child of God, you are a child of God. You are a child of God. What business do I have to do with the things, the nonsense from the world? I know some of us, you may, you may be saying that, you know, but, you know, it, it's the beat. I'm listening to the beat. The, it's good beat. Good, good music. What, what is good? Anything that is not from God is no good. <laughs> you know, let, let, me, let me tell you what the devil does. <laughs> there are things that are highly demonic. You can tell. That one, no Christian will go closer. You can tell. And there are some, they are just in between. They are not demonic and they are not spiritual. So that's where the Christians sometimes we find ourselves. Because it's good, it's good, it's like feel good kind of thing. And therefore you won't feel bad because it's not the extreme. And you are not feeling too holy because it's not so spiritual, right? <laughs> what is God is God. The word of God, the Bible says, everything else shall pass away. But my word will never pass away. Knowledge will cease. People will come and go. Nations will arise and fall. But the government of God shall ever remain. There will be a generation that will come that will be more radical than this generation. They will come and declare the word of God as it is. So if, if our generation can choose to be mild and just in between and just there. But God is looking for people who will come and establish his word. Hallelujah. The wisdom of this world is bitterness. Full of bitterness. Yes. Hatefulness. Every word that comes out of their mouth is hateful sense. Everything that comes out of their mouth is words of deception. The world has nothing in it for you and I. That's right. The world has nothing in there because all they have is selfish ambition. Me, myself, and I. How I want to make it by myself. Even if I need to step on your nose. That is the system of the world. That every single person is like striving for themselves. There is no unity. There is no love. But Jesus conquered the world with love. Where the issue of my brother is my issue. Amen. The worry of my sister is my worry. Yes. Jesus said to them, he said, when I was sick, you did not, you know, visit me. When I was hungry, who came and gave me food to eat? And the disciples said, ah, master. When were you sick? When were you hungry? You'll be right there for you. But he's talking about the brothers. He's talking about the people that are gathered. Christianity is not just you, yourself, and I. It is about all the other people that you see around you. That is the wisdom of God. Where God save you so that you can manifest the goodness of God to people. Amen. Like, he said, come and see. Come and see what God is doing in my life. Amen. Come and see how God has blessed me that I can be a blessing to somebody. Come and see how God has been so gracious to me so that you can extend that same grace to somebody. Amen. That same forgiveness. God has forgiven you and yet you are in a tight lock with somebody that you don't want to talk to. You see that person, the other way, you're gone. But yet God has been merciful to us. 
If God was to count my sins, ay, 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 he would have finished me. <laughs> but thank God there is grace. Yeah. And so that same grace that has been extended, show that to somebody. Yeah. That is the wisdom of God. Amen. Show that to somebody. Yeah. I want to just speak quickly on the wisdom of God. The wisdom that comes from God. Proverbs 3.17 Her ways are ways of pleasantness and all her paths are peace. Her ways are ways of pleasantness and all her paths are peace. The wisdom of God is peace. The peace of God that transcends understanding it accompany us wherever we go. You are an agent of peace. You are an agent of peace. Wherever you go, there's, you should demonstrate peace. As much as it depends on you, live in peace. Be at peace with yourself and with people. The peace of God that transcends understanding will be your portion. Hallelujah. Amen. And that is the wisdom of God. Because wisdom is knowledge correctly applied. The question is that what knowledge are you building your foundation on? That's right. Is this the, is this the knowledge of this world that you are living by? Or the knowledge of God in which you are building your life on? Because if you are applying the wisdom and the knowledge of this world then that will lead you to strive, confusion, frustration, and d disaster. But if your life is based on the wisdom of God, God is saying live in peace. Amen. Strive for peace. Amen. Desire peace. And gentleness. Amen. Be gentle. You know sometimes the way we deal with ourselves, we deal so harshly. Yeah. Eh? And yet we expect God to, you know, show that same gentleness towards us. From people that you work with. The people that, you know, you acquaint yourself with day by day. How do you behave towards them? How do you live your life with them? This morning, God wants to download in your life His wisdom. Which is the knowledge in which you need to apply in your life. Amen. Or else, the other wisdom which is from this world is there. It's quick fix. Yes. Quick solution. It looks pleasant at that short moment. But at the end of it, there is pain. At the end of it, there is regretness. You begin to bite your fingernails and say, oh my God. Had I known, had I known, don't be like that. I don't want you to say, had I known. Every time you say, had I known, then you know you have made a boo-boo. <laughs> you have made a mistake, had I known. Which means you didn't know. And you spoke out of order. You did some things that are all of a sudden how you wish you can reverse it. Yes. Hallelujah. This morning, the grace of God is available. Amen. This morning, God is, is here to give us all second chance. Yeah. But what he is saying to us this morning is that allow his wisdom to guide you. Amen. Apply his wisdom in his word. Amen. That will give you peace. Amen. That will give you, will give you structure. Amen. Your life will be structured. Because you are applying the wisdom of God in your life. This morning, without this wisdom, your life will be in shambles. And if your life somehow is in, in a way that you do not desire, the wisdom of God is available this morning. Though it may look weird, but when you begin to apply His wisdom, at the end of it, you will laugh. Hallelujah. At the end of it, you will reap a good fruit. Amen. At the end of it, 
you will glorify God. At the end of it, you will praise God. Because God has been good. This morning, let's be on our feet. Even as I called our worship team. I want you to just take a minute. I need, James James said, if any lack wisdom, let him ask. God is giving wisdom freely. He is not going to charge you. He's giving it to all of us this morning. Because when wisdom of God is applicable in our lives, we'll begin to see the hand of God. We'll begin to see the power of God, which we have been designed for so long. The reason is that sometimes we are not seeing the power of God because we are applying the wrong kind of knowledge. And therefore, we are not seeing that wisdom. So this morning, I want you to close your eyes. I don't know how far you have gone. You know, some knowledge that you applied in your life has gotten you somewhere that you don't want to be. Some things that you said has caused some trouble for you. But this morning, as our eyes are closed, I want us to just go before the Lord and agree with James that, Lord, we are asking for your wisdom. If I have applied the wisdom of this world in my life, if my life has been based on the wisdom of this world, Lord, this morning, have mercy on me. This morning, Lord, impact me with your wisdom. Lord, this morning, let your wisdom begin to be evident in my life. Lord, let the wisdom of God all begin to overshadow me and empower me in all that I do. Just begin to open your mouth and and, and begin to pray. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you for your wisdom. Yes, Lord, I know the decision that I made last time. I did not see, seek your counsel. I did not seek your, your, your wisdom. Lord, forgive me. Lord, this morning we have come because you have the higher wisdom. A wisdom that will lead us to our destiny. A wisdom that will lead us, oh God, to fulfill our purpose. A wisdom, oh God, that will lead, lead, lead us, oh God, in fulfillment, oh God, of all that you have spoken about us. Thank you this morning, oh God. Mandele Bosha. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. This morning, receive the counsel of God. Every wisdom that is not based on your word is not from you. Any counsel that is not agreement with your word, oh God, is from the pit of hell. This morning, in the name of Jesus, oh God, we desire, oh God, your wisdom. In our household, your wisdom. In our marriages, your wisdom. In our churches, your wisdom. The wisdom of God. Lord, this morning. In our businesses, oh God, we will not do business like the world does their business. But Lord, the wisdom of God will make us unique. The wisdom of God will guide us. The wisdom of God, oh Lord, even in choosing partners, Lord, the wisdom of God will guide us. This morning we need your wisdom. The wisdom of God, oh God, will help us in our daily life, our walk with you, oh God. Because there are some choices and decisions that we need to make. But without your wisdom, without your wisdom, Lord, the enemy will mislead us. But this morning in the name of Jesus, Lord, we are praying, oh God, for this wisdom. Some of us, we need to take some business ideas. Some of us, we need to make some crucial decisions. But without the counsel of heaven, Lord, the enemy, oh God, will mislead us. This morning, oh God, somebody here this morning, May the Lord release upon you the counsel of heaven. 
the wisdom of God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Before the worship team continue and minister, if you're here and you need prayers, there are men and women of God that are here. They'll help you. Don't be in a hurry to leave. As we'll give chance to the worship team to lead us as we worship a little bit. But if you need prayer, please feel free to come forward. Our pastors are here. They will help and minister to you. God bless you.